Welcome back to Faithteen TV and friends. Speaking to the issues shaping our times today, we've got my guest host, Doug Sharp, and his special guest. I hope you enjoy the show. The opioid crisis is uh, very much a real thing, and uh, it's a big crisis in the nation. Everybody's wondering, what can we do about it? In a faith-based context, you don't get maximum uh, blessings with minimum effort. Sometimes it's hard work, sometimes there's sacrifice, sometimes there's struggle. The longer-term approach, uh, coupled with you know a graduation maybe at month 12, and then, then being able to stay in the community for another possibly six months or a year to do an internship or something to that effect, re-entering to society when they're really fully ready so that they're reducing or mitigating the risk of relapse. Health Canada and the Public Health Agency of Canada provide a comprehensive overview of addiction. The data highlights the severity of the crisis along with the significant number of deaths and hospitalizations. The Centre for Addiction and Mental Health offers insights into the relationship between substance use disorders and the impact of addiction on the individual citizen and society. These sources together provide a detailed picture of addiction in our nation, underscoring the critical need for effective rehabilitation programs, as well as the need for a holistic approach to addressing substance use disorders. Between 2016 and 2023, the nation witnessed over 40,000 apparent opioid deaths. Among the victims, males and individuals aged 20 to 59 years were predominantly affected, with many of those deaths involving stimulants. In fact, there were almost 17,000 stimulant-related poisoning hospitalizations reported in Canada from 2016 to 2023. It's estimated now that 67,000 deaths per year in Canada are directly linked to substance use, with tobacco and alcohol being the leading contributors. These statistics underscore the importance of addressing substance use disorders and mental illness in tandem, focusing on prevention, treatment, and support systems to mitigate the impacts on individuals and society at large. So these are some of the issues and questions we are going to be exploring with our guest today. George Glover is someone who's been on the front lines for years now, serving those struggling with addictions, their families and community members who have a heart to help. George is currently serving as executive director for the organization Touched by Addiction, which aims to help people from across Canada with proven resources to break the chains of addiction. So we will be asking him questions to share those in, that information with us and his perspectives on the challenges of addiction itself and what treatments work well and how we can best move forward as fellow citizens with, again, our heart to help those around us who need it. So thanks for joining us for this important conversation that is impacting so many of our fellow citizens and family members. Let's get to it. Well, thank you so much, George, for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time. Doug, nice to be with you. Well, this is such an important issue, uh, addictions and mental health issues in Canada. Uh, we are, uh, we're in a situation here now where I think we're on, in kind of experiencing new things that we haven't seen before. And having you here today is really important because you have such an extensive background in, in, in working with people who have addictions and mental health issues that you've got so much experience. I have a, I have a, a great belief here today that you're going to be able to help us to understand these issues better and look for solutions that, uh, that work. So first, maybe if I could just ask you, cause there's a lot of people out there that are joining us today, I'm sure, that really don't know where we're at as Canadians here in our nation uh, with, with addictions. And is, 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 it go, is the trend going up? Is it, is it holding? Or where are we at right now with, uh, with these particular things uh, like the mental health issues that we're talking about? Uh, well, the, the, the data is, is pointing in most uh, provinces of the country, Doug, that uh, the opioid crisis is still um, alive and uh, very tragically going up. 
Um, it certainly got pockets in the nation, uh, such as the east side of Vancouver and places in the Maritimes as well that we read about in the, in the uh, media. But uh, the opioid crisis is uh, very much a real thing, and uh, it's a big crisis in the nation. And uh, everybody's wondering, what can we do about it? British Columbia has their uh, new model that they're uh, using. They're talking about uh, they're implementing some forms of decriminalization of drugs. Alberta's going with more uh, investing millions of dollars into treatment facilities. But uh, suffice it to say, we definitely have a crisis uh, with uh, that's hitting families uh, coast to coast in our nation. And and are you see are you finding that there are uh, that there are uh, people groups that are that are more vulnerable than others? Or are we seeing a, a spike in challenges in, in particular communities here in Canada? Um, yeah, I, I, there, there is some data out there on it. Of course, the data is delayed a year or two, sometimes three or four years. So I, we don't have totally up to date data, but intuitively, I would say that, uh, certainly there are some communities that are being hit harder than other communities. Uh, the West coast is, is always one because of its temperate climate to uh, people can stay outdoors longer. Uh, it's not as cold, so they can abuse illicit uh, substances easier uh, without other effects. Um, but, uh, you know, suffice it to say, uh, you know, all communities in the country uh, across our nation of Canada are being affected. Small communities, medium-sized communities, large communities. Uh, it definitely, the opioid crisis is a big problem in Canada. And and are you uh, in in your experience as you're as you're working um, uh, in with the, with these challenges across the country, are you see are you seeing solutions that are working better than others? Are there are there attempts being made that are not producing uh, positive results in the lives of those that uh, that are being served, or uh, are there things that are working really well or aren't working at all? Our approach is that you know, a, a quick fix. You didn't get into it overnight. You're not going to get out of it overnight. Uh, you don't get maximum uh, blessings with minimum effort. Sometimes it's hard work. Sometimes there's sacrifice. Sometimes there's struggle. And, and that's part of the process of life. And so our space that we operate in is, is talking about uh, alternative programs, particularly in the faith-based space, and also in the space of a residential treatment approach. You know, there are outpatient programs, there are, um, there are employee assistant programs that are short, that are very expensive, but the space that we prefer, that we feel has a very high track record, proven results, is more of a long-term one-year approach that is a community setting that's peer-to-peer, -peer, but also with some professional assistance and is a low-cost to get into the program uh, because mm -hmm. a lot of people they've exhausted their resources when they've been in addictions they um, they don't have the money to pay forty thousand dollars for a 90-day program uh, they want a, a solution that's uh, you know that's accessible that's economical for them to get into uh, and and a lot of times they burn the bridges with their loved ones you know they they have uh broken the law, they've sometimes stolen from their relatives, their parents, and what have you to support their lifestyle, and they've burned those bridges. So they don't have any resources to get into the expensive programs. And some of the secular programs often have a long waiting list. So in comes a solution of, of various faith-based treatment models that don't kind of hit somebody over the head hard with a Bible, but they do say, you know what? you were created as a tripartite being. And part of that is your spiritual being. And, and we simply believe that God can be the great deliverer of your uh, mental bondage to want to abuse substances. Because really behind it all, you know, people are medicating the pain, you know, of abuse and different things. Oftentimes they turn to substance abuse to medicate the pain of something that happened in their past. So that's a kind of a long answer, Doug, to a short question. But but my, my commentary is, is that quick fix is not the way to go, that people need to, when they're talking to their loved ones, they need to think about more of a long-term approach as being more effective, generally speaking. Now, as you as you were describing that that approach, um, you're really describing the Teen Challenge Canada approach. Is that is that fair to say? Is that is that am I reading that right? 
Well, that that's certainly one of them. Teen Challenge would be the largest uh, multi-site faith-based uh, drug recovery or drug treatment program in the nation. Um, it's located, of course, around the world, many locations in the United States and elsewhere around the world. And I spent many years there in my career. So it's a, it's a great program. It's not co-ed. It's the campuses are either for men or for women. They're not together. Uh, it's a one-year model. Uh, it has a, a proven cure rate. You know, when surveyed, people have gone through the 12-month program and they surveyed them five years later on, they find out that, you know, as many as 70% of the graduates have remained clean and drug-free. So it, it has a proven track record, but Teen Challenge is not for everybody. There are other, other faith-based programs out there, such as Wagner Hills in Langley, British Columbia, uh, the Helm in Halifax. There's for women, there's Naomi and Ruth in the Maritimes. Uh, there's uh, Redemption House in Oshawa. There, there are many ones that kind of take pieces of the Teen Challenge model and say, we're going to have a one-year residential program, and it has going to have a strong spiritual component. Uh, it's going to have counseling. It's going to have uh, training around things like uh, uh, work ethics and an opportunity for you to further your education. If you don't have a, a high school diploma, you can also, many of these programs, you can earn a high school diploma while you're there in the program. So, um, but, but some of them uh, maybe have uh, less stringent uh, entry requirements. So it's a matter of, uh, you know, working with the family and the person that's trapped in addiction, where we kind of come in and say, okay, let's try to get a program that is a fit for your particular circumstance. And, and that's, that's an important factor in people trying to help their loved one. Uh, they, they may not be open to having going to a residential program right away. They might have another few steps in the process before they say, you know what, I'm willing to give this a try. So those are some thoughts, at least uh, for starters, Doug. Right, and 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 I, I'm intrigued. You uh, you mentioned working with the family as well as the as well as the person who's who's having the uh, uh, issues with addiction or mental health challenges. Um, I, I remembered uh, seeing some statistics on the Teen Challenge Canada website. Actually, I believe it was that said that if there was a uh, one parent who had uh, challenges with addictions or a history of challenges with addictions, that you had. At twice the uh, chance of having addictions yourself. And if both parents had challenges with addictions, then that number moved to nine times uh, the, uh, the, the, po the potential for you to experience those challenges as well. So there is a behavioral uh, statistic there that's quite strong. And so bringing in the family, you're saying that's a real key part of it as well to work together. Yeah, abs absolutely. And I think the, the programs that do Teen Challenge and Redemption House and some of these other ministries, Wagner Hills, really work with the families, uh, make sure that um, there's an opportunity uh, on a monthly basis or even twice monthly that the family members can come and that a staff member can facilitate good discussion and begin the healing process. So that, that's definitely part of the um, you know success factors in seeing a, a really good uh, really good results. Of course, you know, the, the person that gets into the program, you know, they've, they've lived a fairly fluid life, if you will. And so now they're coming into a program where there's structure, there's discipline, there's requirements. You know, I have to go to classes at a certain day. I have to get up at this time of day, you know, so it can be a bit of a cold turkey shock to someone that's, that's basically lived on the streets or really hasn't, didn't have many personal disciplines in the lifestyle that we're living. But if it's a team effort coming together to help the person, it has a much greater chance of success overall. They found out that the, the God factor is one of the key cure factors uh, in the treatment program. But the other thing is they found out after five years, as high as 86% of the people who have gone through the program remain clean and drug free when surveyed. We love Canada and we wanna see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference and all gifts are tax deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit fayteen.tv or call 1-866-844-844. 
888-888-0844 to donate today. You had mentioned that there were um, long-term approaches and short-term approaches, and there were two different ways to look at uh, at achieving uh, cure cure rate increases. Or can you tell me a little bit about that? Like when you say long-term, how long-term is it? Short-term, how short a term is it? And what's the, what are the differences between those two approaches? Well, I, I think in a, in a faith-based context, uh, most of the the programs uh, that we work with, uh, we our, our company represents a number of um, uh, faith-based uh, recovery agencies in the country, different places in the country, and um, you know the the longer-term approach, uh, coupled with you know a graduation maybe at month twelve, and then then being able to stay in the community for another possibly six months or a year to do an internship or something to that effect. Each organization maybe calls it a little bit different. Some of them call it leadership and training. Um, that that peer support and just gradual reentry to society uh, where they plan out, are they going to go to school? Are they going to go get a job? You know, what's the family support look like? Just slowing things down and don't be in a rush to get the graduation diploma, but think of it more longer term has a much probably greater chance of long-term success again, that uh, it's more important re-entering to society when they're really fully ready, you know, and a bunch of the boxes are checked so that um, they're reducing or mitigating the risk of relapse. So those are some of the factors. The short-term programs, um, you know, the faith-based community of recovery centers don't have uh, many, they are wading into those waters to have some uh, short-term programs. Um, but by and large, uh, the short-term programs, 30-day programs are run by uh, more the medical community. Um, it's a secular approach. There's not the God factor, if you will, uh, in the program. And uh, I really can't comment, or I don't know the latest data on those programs, but uh, our studies uh, tend to show that the long-term approach is uh, uh, much more effective overall. And and what's your experience with cure rates in those longer-term programs? Like, is it a percent, expressed as a percentage uh, that you, an average that you could share? Uh, there, there's been, Doug, there's been a number of studies done on uh, Teen Challenge uh, um, in Canada, the United States, different places over the years. Uh, some of them have shown as high as a cure rate of 86% post-graduation. Those are people that have gone through the 12-month program and have graduated and been out in society for five years when they were surveyed by an independent body um, led by um, a, a clinical uh, doctor or somebody to that effect, uh, and they looked at all, all the data points, they found out that the, the God factor is one of the key cure factors uh, in the treatment program. But the other thing is they found out after five years, as high as 86% of the people who had gone through the program remained clean and drug-free when surveyed. Now, I Though that particular survey is a few years ago, it may have, I think it's come down to maybe around 70% post-treatment, but it's mm. still a, fair, a very high number relative to many other programs that people go in. And I've had many, uh, you know, ex-addicts that I've worked with over the years who are now gone on to be doctors, dentists, and and uh, all kinds of great successful careers who said that, you know, the 30-day program just did not work for me. You know, I just couldn't get my head wrapped around it. I couldn't succeed. I couldn't really get down to the root problems in just a 30-day program. And there's many the people in my career that I've worked with that have said, you know, I've tried multiple 30-day or 90-day programs, and really it didn't work for me. I needed a longer-term approach to really build a new foundation. And so that's why why uh, we feel it's one of the most effective ways um, to help people that are entrenched in drug addiction. Well, I, I can tell you, as, as, a, as someone who's witnessed uh, firsthand, I've seen the the Teen Challenge uh, organization come through our local church and uh, and share, and I've seen. Uh, young men who have come in one time with serious addiction challenges that they're dealing with. And then they come, they'll come back say a year later and they'll be a leader in teen challenge. They'll actually be leading other men out of addiction. And uh, the successes, I tell you, it, uh, I, I get goosebumps thinking about it, you know, cause they really have, 
uh, in my own experience, I have seen so many really beautiful uh, heal stories of healing and things within that organization using that long term challenge or that long term approach. Yeah, yeah, to totally agree. And, uh, you know, the, the need is great. I don't think there could ever be enough uh, recovery programs in the nation because the need is so great. But um, there is a drive on in the in the faith based community to open more community centers uh, that are kind of boots on the ground to kind of build a relationship, a first step relationship with people that are uh, struggling with uh, drug and alcohol problems as a first step to build relationship and then to be able to introduce them to the longer term uh, model. So community centers are opening, but uh, I think there's also a drive to get more of the faith-based recovery centers talking uh, with each other. You know, they're, they're, you know, there's ones that, for instance, there's one out in uh, Abbotsford, BC that has 105 men in their program today. You know, doing a great job has a has a great track record, seeing tremendous things happen in men's lives. It's a long term approach. They're maybe not that well known, but they're having great impact. And so we want to see if we can through the Touch by Addiction uh, website. We're building a database that parents and grandparents can go to and type in some information and find out geographically what's available in their area, uh, and find out you know uh, does the person have to quit. Uh, cigarette smoking cold turkey are they allowed to be on psychotropic medications when they come in some of these these different nuances that uh parents and grandparents are concerned about and trying to get a right fit solution so teen challenge is great teen challenge isn't for everybody uh i highly recommend it as one solution but there's a lot of other great faith-based programs around that could be a a great fit in different circumstances for a loved one and Touched by Addictions, the website that you're referencing, that is a, a website where those resources and in, that information is available to families who are concerned or have someone that they'd like to care for? That's right, Doug. Yeah, touchbyaddiction.com is a national uh, resource database of faith-based locations. The, the database is not um, live as of today, but it will be very shortly. But if somebody watching today, they'd like to find out for uh, a male or a female loved one, they can uh, put in their contact information and we will respond to them very quickly and begin to, you know, have a conversation about, you know, uh, where the person lives and what are their specific needs and then try to marry them to the best fit solution for their loved one. So it is a process. And I think Touch by Addiction steps in and says, we'll do some handholding uh, to help the family in their hour of need. Well, that sounds like an absolutely, uh, a, like a really effective way of doing it, that personal consultation, because I would imagine that there's always unique circumstances. Uh, I'm sure there's things that are consistent throughout, but there's really unique circumstances in everyone's lives. And for you to have that personalized coaching and consulting uh, uh, approach, I'm sure that's very effective. Yeah, they, they, you know, there are unique circumstances in that some people are facing court cases, and so they're limited uh, where they can go. Uh, as I mentioned, others uh, allow um, psychotropic medications, you know, uh, like uh, methadone as well, uh, methadone maintenance, uh, and, and some have more of a uh, approach that, you know, it has to be cold turkey before you can come into the program. Others would say, we allow you to come into the program uh, as a methadone user, but we will work with you over the course of the year with a phys consulting physician to wean you off methadone maintenance, which is one of the terms in the industry. Uh, so, you know, they all have little, little different approaches. Um, but I, I think that we at Touched by Addiction want to be able to be a resource to say, you know, okay, we can recommend this program to you as a parent or a grandparent without hesitation or or reservation as a place that we feel confident that your loved one can go to and get the results that they need. Now, sometimes, you know, somebody goes into a program, a guy or a girl, uh, and they get in there and they realize it's a little too much. You know, sometimes, you know, we, I, I, you know, I think of a, of a Teen Challenge graduate that went through about three or four different Teen Challenge locations before he finally graduated. Today, he's an executive director, happily married, uh, of a ministry on the West Coast that uh, reaches homeless people in the Fraser Valley. So that's just one story of a changed life, uh, and there, there are many. So get, getting a right fit, and you know, you have to be perseverant, patient, 
And having somebody to hold your hand through the process is, is very helpful. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure glad you're there doing that uh, here in Canada. And, uh, and you have all the resources. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you have all the resources that you need to get the job done because uh, this is a great need, obviously. This is a really great need here in our nation. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think that you know people that are watching today, if they want to invest some dollars in helping some worthy causes, they, sh they should consider um, investing some dollars in their local faith-based recovery programs. Uh, they, they need uh, your support and need you to volunteer, to get involved. Uh, there's many ways that you can help uh, these organizations have greater impact and reduce the loss of life. You know, one, one personal story before, before we went to air today is uh, that of my nephew, 29, uh, 28 years of age, uh, living in Calgary last year that was involved uh, using uh, fentanyl uh, that uh, we believe was poisoned. And unfortunately, he lost his life in uh, Calgary, Alberta um, last summer uh, to fentanyl use. And uh, so this, this is an issue that doesn't just hit so many Canadian families, and it's not only for me as a career, but it hits our own family in that we lost one of our own loved ones um, because of, of uh, an opioid tragedy. And uh, so we have a heart for parents, uh, the people that work on our team, um, the volunteers, paid staff, they really do have a heart to help families uh, find solutions that are a right fit for them. Excellent. So, with so, we, we, if we have uh, people that are wanting to get in touch with you to either secure resources or to uh, find out the best place to to put their money uh, and and invest in, in in local centers, you can help them out with that. Where, what's the best way for people that are viewing uh, here today to connect with you? Uh, yeah, Doug. Uh, the, the easiest way is go to touchedbyaddiction.com. And uh, go to that website, fill out the contact form. Uh, we will be ha adding a toll-free number soon. But in the meantime, you can put in your information there. It will come to one of our desks. And, uh, and if you'd like to connect with me personally to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I'm certainly available for that as well. But uh, we're very responsive, and we'll work with you to find out the best solution we can to help your loved one. Wonderful. Well, thank you, George, for your time today. What a, what a, a great body of knowledge and experience for people to call upon. We thank you so much for the, the time that you've invested in Canadians' uh, lives who are, are having these challenges over all of the years. And we just look forward to doing everything we can to help support you in the future and keeping, keeping you out there doing what you're doing. Thank you. You're most welcome, Doug. Pleasure to be with you today. All God's best. And thank you for joining us once again for Faithune TV and friends. I'm so glad that you took the time today. If you want to watch the show again, maybe share it with your friends or perhaps catch another episode that we've aired, simply go to Faithune.tv where it's all there for your viewing ease. And to our regular donors and our monthly partners, thank you so much for standing with us so that we can stay on air across our nation every single week, bringing these important conversations to you as an independent, nonprofit TV show. You're the ones that keep us at it. If you'd like to become a part of the team, simply go to faithteen.tv or give us a call at 1-866-844-0844 and our team would be happy to serve you, answer any question that you might have, help you get signed up to become a monthly partner or give a special gift or pray for your personal prayer needs. We are here for you. Thanks again for joining us. Hope to see you next week.